Today we take a look at a fascinating fish that I'm excited to tell you about, the Threadfin Rainbow. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and a while back I bought this fish, and it's just fantastic. It's a really, really interesting and beautiful fish to have in your tank. Uh, I know you're gonna like it too. It's called the Threadfin Rainbow, or the Feather Fin. <laughs> the feather fin rainbow. And uh, here's the scientific name here. What's important about a scientific name is that not everywhere in the world may use the same common name. So I always try to include it even though I can't say them. We're gonna take a look at this fish while I tell you a little bit about some of the specifics that go along with keeping this particular beautiful fish. This fish is best suited to a planted tank. They also dislike harsh lighting. So if you have a lot of duckweed like I do, that's a real handy thing to have with these guys. They don't want it too bright, and they but they do want it well planted. So it's, a, it's great for those planted tanks that rely on low light plants like Crips and Anubis, like this one. This fish was first described by Minkin in 1974. They are found in Indonesia, New Guinea, and Northern Australia. This fish is found in two rivers in New Guinea and has been known to migrate up to 500 kilometers from the mouth of the river. In Australia, they're found in two swamps, the Jardine River and the Edward River. Some things that make thread fins a little bit more difficult to keep include their diet. Because they're omnivores and they're gonna eat vegetable and plant matter, you need to give them kind of a wide variety and the best way to do that is usually with flakes, but you're gonna need to crush them because although their mouths look sort of a normal size, their throats are very small and they can actually choke on pieces of food that are too large. For treats, you should offer them blood worms, perhaps baby brine shrimp. Uh, things like that are gonna go down and, and be very nutritious for them, but shouldn't be all of their diet because like I said, they do eat lots of different things in nature. Another thing that makes this fish difficult is it's very sensitive to water changes. You need to make sure that it's a really, really stable tank that you're gonna put these guys into and the mortality rate when you first bring them in can be high. I bought seven of these and only lost one and I count myself as lucky. Now they've been doing really well for about, oh, maybe more than a month or so. And uh, I think that they're fine now. But when I go to move them, I'm gonna make sure that that tank is completely stable. With that in mind, it's a really bad idea to try to cycle a tank or put these in a tank that you've only just set up. You wanna put these guys in a really mature tank. Something else to consider is, although they're really small fish of about two inches, they do need a little bit more room to, to move. Uh, it's better to have them in a longer tank if you can, over 15 gallons. This is a 30 gallon tank and it's about the appropriate size, especially when it's full of plants. They don't enjoy a whole lot of open area to swim in. They want some places to hide. And uh, these guys are, are great about being out in front all the time. And I think in part because they know at any moment they can dash into the plants and hide. So they don't. It's pretty strange, but a lot of fish are like that. Now I would have bought 10 of these but frankly, one, they're terribly expensive compared to just the regular fish. And two, they just ran out. I mean, these fish, I don't see them come through very often. So I grabbed up as many as I could. And uh, I ended up with a school, I've got six of them, but I'd like to get more. And I probably will, I'll probably include more females. Uh, the males differentiate themselves from the females by the finnage, of course, like many other fish. The males have the really long, pretty fins and the females usually have transparent fins and they're shorter. I have one that I think is perhaps a female, but I'm not gonna, I'm not really sure. It could be an immature male. I'm pretty sure it's a female. I hope it's a female. Uh, having a female in the group really makes the other guys kind of enhance their colors. And uh, there's a wide variety of colors with these things apparently too. They can be different colors because uh, they came from New Guinea or they came from Australia, so sort of a regional thing. And they can even be different just because uh, once the captain of the tank. And folks, that's all I have for you today. Just a quick one. I'll be back next week with another video. Follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank. Enjoy some thread fins. See you soon.
is a sort of a regional thing, and they could even de <laughs> This fish is found in two rivers in New Guinea. Yeah. This fish... <laughs> What's KM? Is that kilometers or kilometers? Some things that make... that. Uh, how do you say that? Minken. Minken. Or perhaps baby blind... Uh, Perhaps baby brine shrimp, though, when you change the water, it... Uh, ah! For that, with that in mind, it's really a bad idea to try to sankle a... Sank, 